Doki Doki. All right, let's try this. We'll see if it's any good. This game is not suitable for children. Are those easily disturbed? Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be such a fucking insane experience. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. Yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah. Oh my God, yes, jeez. They think I'm like some pussy. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Clint Stevens. You guys, give me a name. Weeaboo. I'll just do Clint Stevens. John, not cuck. Hey. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently and I would get tired of waking up. But if she's gonna chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. <sighs> I overslept again, but I caught you this time. I think of the two Ryan. Hello, Corlash. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. E, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. <laughs> That's me, Clint Stevens. <laughs> well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine, but you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be me, even if you wanted to, whatever you say, Suri. Hee <laughs> hee. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Glenn Stevens, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining clubs. I haven't been looking either. That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did. In one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's saying, Sayori likes to worry- Oh, I accidentally skipped that shit. Likes to worry a little bit too much when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Damn. That does sound like me. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I died the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the weird- Oh, shit. Chat, you can relate. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. <laughs> Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I'll promise. Yay. Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised to even let myself relate, relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Okay. I, when does this game get scary? This school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sari must have come into the classroom where I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the class, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. Know what? Oh my god, is she gonna touch me? Well, that you could come to my club, Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. E Meanie. Thank you for the sub, Fox Show. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Sayori is the vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Hey, hey, hey. Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to plan this all out. I let out a long sigh. Ugh, oh, Fine, 
I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly followed Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Being generally used for third year classes and activities, Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me new member. I glanced around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club, it's a pleasure to meet you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Ugh, fucking lollies in this game. What's with their eyes spacing? I don't know. Seriously, you brought a boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, oh, Clint Stevens, <laughs> what a nice surprise. <laughs> All right, she's the cutest. She's the cutest, she's, okay. She's a trap. All words is me in this situation. This club, it's full of incredibly cute girls. <laughs> what are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Uh, sorry, Natsuki. Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear and then turns back towards the other girls. Anyways, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Glenn Stevens. Oh. Oh. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class together. I stared at the back of her head. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. Not true, not true of Clint Stevens. So having her smile at me, so genuinely feels a little, uh, you do, Monica. Come sit down, Clint Stevens. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them, I'll get the cupcakes. Sorry, I get a little bit too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged for, to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Okay. Who do we choose? Sayori or Monica? I can't choose the lolly. Still feeling awkward? I oh wait, I don't even get to fucking choose. I thought this was a game. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? What if your mom hears you playing this weeb garbage? Don't care. Seriously, I've done worse. <laughs> Ta-da! Whoa. How much worse can this be than getting caught fapping? Like, barely worse, okay? Just a little worse. I can deal with that. Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. <laughs> the whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. Oh, it's so cute! <laughs> I had no idea you were so good at baking that suki. E he he. Well, you know, just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. And Suki's quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. What is this, like, preluding to something? I thought you technically did. Say where you said. Well, maybe. But not for, you know, you, dummy. All right, okay. I gave up on Atsuki's weird logic and dismissed the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I guess. Ee hee hee, don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. That's not insulted. Yuri looks away. I meant, you know, she's the fucking hottest, man. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? Uh, 
was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. I haven't joined any clubs yet and Sayori seemed really happy, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member of any of the major clubs. Were you a leader of the debate club last year? Uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics about the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare your events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. Bang all the girls? Okay, I got you. I got you. We're gonna focus on Yuri first. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. I have to open the game files? Well, I don't want to open the game files. Fuck that shit. Monica really is a great leader. Rhea also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club. It must be hard to start a new one. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting all their effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. Okay, this game had like a million warnings for disturbing content. This is not disturbing. At all. Like, this is like the cutest game of all time. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have really worked hard to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. I can make them enthusiastic about my cock. So Clint Stevens, what kind of things do you like to read? Ugh. Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering. Manga. I muttered quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. I can't do voices for each, man. You gotta be kidding me. Just, just be happy with this. <laughs> Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved. <laughs> she, she seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in. Dude, this game's not boring. This game's fucking sick. It's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can be, can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Uh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well have, be having a conversation with a rock. Really, I wouldn't have expected that. For someone as gentle as you, I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, it takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is, is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. It, never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? Uh, what? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club, club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... D don't say it out loud. And give that back. Fine, fine. Hee hee hee. Your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sarah saddles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Not very confident writer. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. It's kind of like streaming, you know? You gotta, you gotta open up to your viewers. <laughs> Do you have writing experience like me in this game? I'm opening up to you, sharing a beautiful game. You'll love this experience. 
Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Netsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. But I guess it's the same for Yuri. I wanted to read everyone's poems, but we all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of your own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone's even. Uh, yeah, sure. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of our club. Isn't that right, Clint Stevens? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join the club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made a decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and uh, I lose my train of thought. Dude, are you fucking gay, Clint Stevens? Look at these babes. Why would you think of a different club? All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But I'm sorry, I thought, Clint Stevens, you all, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right, okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy. Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, you really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. <laughs> then that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Can I get a pog champ? Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Clint Stevens, I like to forward to see how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Clint Stevens, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? Ooh. That's right, Sarah and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls, Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. <laughs> All right, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Uh, what do you guys think? Type the word you want me to do. I say, she likes, okay, we like Yuri. We like Yuri the most, don't we? <laughs> Extreme. Yuri likes horror. Extreme. Doki Doki, I don't even know what the fuck that means. But it's the title of the game. Infallible, that's a big word. Oh, dude. Heaven sent. Oh my god, I'm killing it right now. Intellectual misfortune. Oh! Unstable. Defeat. No! Oh, why does she. She's a fucking emo. Determination. Eternity. Nightgown? Oh, fuck. I don't want the lolly. Imagination. Unrequited. Oh my god, dude. Philosophy. Rain cloud? Dude, she's seriously a fucking emo. It's insane. Alright. Mm, entropy. I don't even know what that means. Electricity. Any word, I don't know what it means she likes. Extraordinary. Ah, shit. The starscape. Graveyard. Jumpy. Oh shit. Hi again, Glenn Stevens. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha 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 ha. Clint plays shitty golf with us. 
Oh man, dude, but I'm in this game right now, Scott. I would love to play with you guys, but I'm in the fucking zone. Do you guys want me to s wait? It's golf it? Are you guys playing golf it? Do you guys want me to play golf it? Or do you want me to continue Doki Doki? This game's like four hours long, so I could just play this tomorrow. But you guys are in this shit, man. All right, it looks like we got a lot of Doki Doki. So you know what? Fine, I'll play. Well, I don't get invited to their. I don't have like many friends to play games with. So, well, I, I mean, I do have you guys. <laughs> Can we do a poll? Do a poll. I'll play this until you guys finish the poll. I do want to play this game, but I do want to play golf it. 80% Doki Doki? What the fuck? You didn't even spell golf it right. What's wrong with you? I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Clint Stevens. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you guys. Making you dive headfirst in the literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Sayuri's told me you didn't even want to join any club this year, and last year too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Clint Stevens always gives it his best. As long as he's having fun. Damn right. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. Oh, that sounds like kind of a beta move, but okay. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? Oh, yeah, you should. Oh, jealous. How come you and Clint Stevens can become good friends too? Oh, uh, uh, Sayori, what? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Nah, dude, that's that's a good situation. Oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wh wait, Sayori, me? Uh, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. What do I do? Huh? I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right. She's gonna give me a fleshlight. <laughs> a tanga egg. Well, here. Yuri reaches in her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted to. This is, this is, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. <sighs> well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh... Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and her eyes meet for a split second. Oh, God. <laughs> She's so cute, dude. <laughs> but that only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book that you gave me, right? Mm hmm No, I'm not standing up, fuck you. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason, just curious. How come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, oh shit, she bought me a book and we could read it together. Oh, oh. Thanks for sub, Koala Puncha. Thank you for the support, man. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. 
I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyways? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure I don't actually give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. Oh shit, dude. This is, it, it's, uh, it's foreshadowing the game. I can just tell. That's kinda, that's kinda dark. Yuri made it sound like it was gonna be a nice story. So the dark turn came from nowhere. Ah ha ha. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Clint Stevens? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy this kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's a BDSM chick, I can tell. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When these horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, there may not to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plan. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. You think this girl's crazy? I trust this girl. I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts. Oh my god, dude. What if she reads the horror book and then turns into a killer? I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, uh, that's, uh, well, it's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. Ah ha ha ha, what are you saying? Just a moment ago you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put in my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah, are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's, man, I'm fucking smooth, dude. This is like me in real life. I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. Oh yeah, that sounds like when girls talk to me right there. That is reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I, I mean... Ah. Uh -huh. Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's right up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Stop, I'm gonna get a boner. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. <laughs> uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it on her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? <laughs> To turn the page? Uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. 
It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all the things she says and does. That's not smooth right there. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Clint Stevens, <laughs> that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. That's so embarrassing of you to think that. God, you fucking moron. Oh, wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way. Sorry, I really don't think you were subconscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant it that's kind of cute. There we go, there we go, there we go. Uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? Okay, everyone, seriously, Monica, fuck off. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if it waits too long. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thoughts. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not, it's, it's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right, I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Uh, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Oh, shit. Hmm, in that case, I'll read a little more tonight. You fucking idiot! God, it'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right, I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done something like this before. Thanks for sub, Lapa One. Appreciate you, bro. Oh. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically, enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. Think of the sub, De Blasmo. Dude, the, su the sub's coming out for this game. Let's go right now. I do the same myself. I mean, we gotta show it to Yuri, right? We're making such ridiculous progress. Plus, she's gonna love our poem. What do you guys think? It's gotta be Yuri, it's gotta be Yuri. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust your opinion to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. What, what was that? Thank you for the sub, Willis. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. Ugh. He's gonna hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong. Eh? That's, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? Ah ha 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 ha. Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, uh... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable, noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. Think of the sub, Mocha Skin Tone. Thank you for the sub, I appreciate it. Damn. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you'd be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. She smells the virgin on me. <laughs> 
Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example, trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable <laughs> feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased though. Biased, how? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry, it's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or to the Tsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem? Please do. I'd love you to share, I'd love to share my thoughts process behind it, sorry. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. Thank you for the sub, Tiny Todd. Oh my God, dude, the subs in this game. You guys love this fucking game. After all, this isn't supposed to be a literature club. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe calms, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. I don't know what the fuck that just means. I'm gonna say it's good because I wanna fuck her. <laughs> Thanks for some Flippy's fire. Appreciate you, dude. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. <laughs> That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. Thank you for the sub, Moon Shoes. <laughs> Dude, I get more subs playing this shit. Thank you for this. Appreciate it, man. I, I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Who, who? What does that mean? Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Clint Stevens. Really? Thank you for the sub, JK Maxmillion. I hope you have a great day, man. Thank you for the sub. I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. Think of the sub, don't win friends with Salad Grim Fold. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. The sub train, thank you. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. Thanks <laughs> for the subs. What the fuck, dude? That's impressive. Huh? It's nothing, really. Yours is impressive too, so. Nah. Thanks for some us, JC. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh my god. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Thanks for some Morosaurus. The tier three. Oh my god. Thank you for the tier three. Uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this. Thank you for the sub, con pop, cop and op. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. I was really nervous about doing all this. But at the end, I enjoyed it. I'm gonna keep doing my best for you, Clint Stevens. Oh, me too. God, thank you for the sub, Pichio Lord Valor. Hope you're having a good day. Thanks for the sub store. Thanks for some Gregory Law. Thanks for three months, man. What the fuck? Let's talk to Sayori. Or you know what? We'll talk to Natsuki. Fuck it. Oh my god. Dude, the weebs sub like crazy. The weebs sub drain. Clint Stevens, if you're not gonna take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh. What do you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but I, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're so proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Thank you for the sub, Shark Racer 69. Hope you have a great day, man. And thank you for the bits, Mike G. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyways. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, they each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Thank you for the sub. 
Delacrity, thanks, bro. Thank you for the sub, Cyrus. Oh my fucking god. And knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Yeah, for real, this is a shit pump. Monkeys can fly, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try. But that's about it. Yeah. I told you that you were gonna like it. Yeah, for real, your poem sucks. <laughs> I like it. Oh, we don't have to be so diplomatic with everybody. Thank you for the sub. Kelthus, I cap for rats. Thank you. That poem dedicated to you too. Thank you. What? Thank you for the sub. Yeah, well, mellow. Yeah, well, me too. Thank you. I, I don't know why I said that wrong, but thank you for the sub. Appreciate it, bro. Just be honest. I am. Thank you for the sub. <laughs> it's a rip. Dude, what the fuck? This is crazy. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other th nice thing about simply writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then it falls flat on purpose. <laughs> it helps bring out the feeling in the last line. Thank you for the sub, Jigga. Hex of Rift, appreciate both of you. Thank you for the subs. <laughs> so you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. Thank <laughs> you for the sub, Paco Burgle. Oh my God, let me look at my sub count. What the fuck, dudes? You guys are insane. That's what it means to be a pro. Thank you for the sub talk. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from my youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take away from her. Oh my god. Thank you for the sub. Doc, feel bad. The Womp. The slow bro with the deer too. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you for the sub Kino's journey as well. We're gonna do. Look at Monica. Fuck Sarah. Sarah likes me. She likes me. Thank you for the sub slot car for the five months, man. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Too infinite. Holy shit, man. This is insane. Thank you for the sub TF. Is really cool. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. I feel bad because like it's. Disrupting the flow of my reading, but I'm not gonna fucking complain about getting a ton of subs. Thank you for the sub, Optimistic Emo. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the sub, Kevin Canada. I hope you're having a good day, man. Thank you. This is like the biggest sub train I've ever had. Having a good time so far? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the sub, Make Cakes. Snyro Time. I thank you guys for the subs. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. This Monica poem upcoming dedicated to you. Thank you for the sub, Miss Pantsu. Hope you had a fantastic day. Thank you for the sub. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Thank you for the sub. It's JMP. Hope you're having a good day. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, so I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. And thank you for the sub, Kevin. <laughs> anyway, want to share your poem with me? Thank you for the sub, Horchan. Figures you would like this game. Thank you for the sub, Horchan. It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah ha 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 Don't worry, Clint Stevens. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great job, Clint Stevens. Thank you for the sub, Wilco. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for the sub. Great job. I was going to ooh in my head while reading this. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. Ah ha ha, that's not very fair. I need to work on my fake laugh. I feel like my fake laugh kind of sucks. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. Thank you for the tier two. 
Tefra FPS, and thank you for the sub Desert Dogi. Appreciate you both. Thank you for the subs. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near your level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learning by trying new things. Thank you for this, I'm Captain Purr. Thank you, appreciate that. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else's might be a little bit biased for their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Yeah, actually I do, because I'm trying to get in her pants. Ah ha ha. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. That's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend, I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with the permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. Is she talking about a glory hole? A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Definitely a glory hole. Definitely a glory hole. What do you think? It's uh, very free form. That's what you call it. Thank you for the sub, IHG cows. Hurry, zero eight. I fucking love both of you, thank you for the subs. It's been a while, cows. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ah ha ha ha, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a little bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's is better friends with each other. I seriously think it might be a glory hole. Thank you for the sub. G fellows, yo fuzzy, a part of the greatest sub train of all time. Thank you so much for the fucking sub, guys. I appreciate you. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll get a big, dark purple of ink. Puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I still like Yuri more, but she's a cutie. We gotta talk to this chick. I'm gonna get the dog really fast. One sec. This is a good poem, Clint Stevens. She loves me. They all love me. This is a good poem, Clint Stevens. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. Yeah, I did not have a boner, all right? I can stand up again if you seriously think I have a boner. Thank you for the sub, John Sutap, Carl Tondry. Thank you guys for the two subs, man. Holy shit, dude. Thank you. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? E -he 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 -he. I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously or that you wouldn't write one at all. All right, fine, okay? I'm just really happy that you wrote one. Look at this, I'm not even on the camera. I'm too fucking tall, you can't see boner. Nope. I'm really happy that you just wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. <laughs> not too short, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't seem, that doesn't mean I'll break my promise, see? It's like I said before, Clint Stevens. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Try new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her at all, yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay. Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. D 
dear sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori. This is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just a little. You can't answer just a little bit to yes or no question. Come on, man. Thank you for the sub. I'm so south. That poem dedicated to you. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to say it, that it was a bad poem. It just, it came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Thank you for the sub chucky temptation. Thank you for the eight months, bro. Appreciate it. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Aw, oh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. I'm surprised. Is there... I don't even think anything bad is gonna happen in this game. I think it's all just a fucking ruse. This will just be like a dating sim. Thanks for some furry pride. LOL. Thank you for the support, I appreciate that. Did I tell you guys that there was a chick who said that she was in my Discord? Sorry, I'm gonna stop the game to tell my story. She said that she was in my Discord and that she saw like four or five people in the voice channel for the first time. And she was like, huh, I'm gonna go in the voice channel. And there was uh, four or five people doing a furry D&D &D group in my fucking Discord. How has it come to this? I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. There was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. Yeah, if that's you, stop, okay? Jesus, don't do that on my fucking Discord. Get your own Discord. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. Mai's Lana, Yuri, and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows fur in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh. Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Thanks. Yours is cute. Cute. Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know, I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Ugh. You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Uh, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it, which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Clint Stevens did. Hey, I want to stay out of this, man. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, uh, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long enough time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Nah. Hey, don't say it. Don't say it. And Clint Stevens liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, that's not what I... Y you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Clint Stevens appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. <gasps> oh, shit! Uh, and how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... no. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Clint Stevens started showing up. Oh shit! <laughs> Natsuki! Ah, uh, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting guys. 
Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Clint Stevens! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should just jump out at the reader, not force themselves to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Clint Stevens. Well, wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary, limiting yourself, it's also a waste. Okay, I seriously think there's nothing scary in this game. This is fucking ridiculous. You understand that, right, Clint Stevens? Uh, well, uh, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Yeah. I'm gonna say Yuri. They- Okay. I'm saying who I like more, right? 